Video 6, How to Create a Song, Part 2 of 5. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to compose a richer drum section using the sampler, and how to edit the loudness of our modules by writing this information directly inside the tracker. From the Synths menu, we choose Sampler. A sampler is similar in some respects to a synthesizer, but instead of generating new sounds through an oscillator, it uses sound recordings of instruments, including other synthesizers, or excerpts from recorded songs. These sounds are technically called samples, and in our case, they are played back by means of the tracker. A single sample is often shifted to different pitches to produce musical scales or chords. In our specific case, the sampler also offers synthesizer-like processes, such as amplitude, panning, and pitch envelopes. Let's route the output of the sampler into the drum synth's amplifier. The reason why we do this is so that we can amplify all the drums in the same way. At this point, we need to tell the sampler to load a sample to play back. We would like to use it to play the sound of a single clap. From the parameter panel, we select Load, then we select the Home icon so that we can see which categories of sound are available within the software and ready to be used. We select Instruments, then Drums, and finally we choose Claps and select Clap3.xi. Now that our clap sound has been loaded into the sampler, we can listen to it at different transpositions using the keyboard. Let's have a closer look at the inside of the sampler module. To do this, select Edit from the Parameters panel. If you press Samples, you can display the content of the sampler. So in our case, this would be the clap sound that we chose beforehand. Here you can set the volume, panning, and other parameters. Panning, for example, defines the stereo image of our sound. If it is set to zero, as, as it is now, the sound is equally distributed between left and right channels. With these buttons, you can display multiple waveforms at once, if more than one sound has been loaded. You can also perform some operations directly on the waveform, such as selecting an area of it, zooming in or out, or accessing other features from this menu, such as crop, which would cut out the selected area of the sample. In the timeline, select the pattern we used for the kick drum, because we need to add a track to it. Now choose a key from the keyboard to find a tuning that suits the kick. When working with percussion samples, it is always important to consider their tunings. The way we do this is by the following. We let the song play, select its generator, and then mute it by pressing the M key from the parameters panel. Now we can listen to just the kick sound and use the keyboard to hunt for the best tuning of the clap. OK, that's fine. Let's write down something very basic. As it stands, the percussion part is really simple, so let's try to create a more interesting rhythm. To do so properly, we need to have a strategy. We have six bars, so we can set three bars until step 47 as the first part of our pattern, and then copy that into the second half of the pattern, editing it a little to achieve some variety. If we move the tracker's cursor onto the velocity column, 
The keyboard will be replaced by this tab, which we can use to enter velocity values from 0, silence, to 9. Let's set some velocity values for the kick. Now we can copy the first half of the pattern into the second half, then edit it a little like this. Let's play it, and we can easily create a pattern for the clap using the same strategy. Before you start, don't forget to select the sampler from the module view, otherwise you would still be writing for the kick. Here we go. Let's open the sampler again. Pressing envelopes displays the envelope view of the sampler. As you can see, envelopes may relate to elements such as amplitude, pitch, and panning. Or you could even assign it to other effects. The first thing I want to do is to smooth out the attack of my clap sample a little bit to let it play along with the kick better. Let's play our drums so we can listen to the edits in real time. Now we can get rid of the breakpoints that we don't need. To make this clap more interesting, we would also like its pitch to change a little over time. We can do this by choosing Pitch. This line in the middle represents the current tuning. We want to bend it down just at the beginning, like this. Okay, now it's fine. We should add reverb to this clap because it sounds too dry.